Hey guys, welcome back to Fix It Friday. So this week we are going to be working on a PC Engine Duo. And uh, for those of you guys that don't know what this is, this is a system which has a combined PC Engine over here on this side and a PC Engine CD over here. So it allows you to play both the CD games and the Hue card games. There's also a version of this that was released in the United States and it's called the Turbo Duo. So these are quite the challenge to work on. Um, and this particular unit, uh, it does power on. Uh, games do play from the Hue card slot, but not surprisingly, games do not play from the CD side. So uh, what makes these really hard to repair is their complexity. So they have a lot of electrolyte capacitors that go bad. This is especially true for the American version, the Turbo Duo. Um, and then depending on what happened, there might be damage to the board. And then finally, Sometimes the laser needs to be calibrated or replaced, and that's a whole challenge in and of itself. So this might be a really long or really short video, and I have absolutely no way of knowing in advance. All right, guys, so let's get started and see how we can get this thing working again. But first, let me take a couple of seconds for a word from the sponsor of this video, PCBWay. PCBWay is my favorite manufacturer of prototype PCBs. They offer very high quality prototype PCBs and they also do larger scale projects. They offer excellent service and they have fast delivery times. They also have a shared projects section where you can browse through lots of really cool DIY projects that you can make for yourself, including this power cleaner modification for the Game Boy Advance. So I highly recommend that you check out the link in the video description and give PCBWay a try. Okay, so back to this week's project. All right, so taking apart the Turbo Duo is actually pretty easy. So on the Japanese version, you have these security bit screws on the back, and you can either use one of those security bit screwdrivers with the little star and the point in the center, or you can actually use a flathead screwdriver that gets between two points, and you can use that to pretty easily remove these. Not too bad. With the American version, it uses um, game bit screws, and you can just use a standard Super Nintendo game bit screwdriver to open those up. Okay, so now that that's all done, we're just going to open up the case here, have a look. And so, uh, yeah, hopefully you can see from just looking at the board that it is packed to the gills with surface mount capacitors. And most of these are probably in a state of failure or close to it, uh, especially in this section here where, where the CD um, circuitry is. So, yeah, at this point, what we need to do is just remove three Phillips screws right here, and then uh, there is a little bit of unhooking of cables here and some desoldering to do. Okay, so now that the board is out and ready to be worked on, I'm going to start with the surface mount capacitors. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with a very specific value. So I'm going to do, I have a whole bunch of 100 microfarad um, capacitors that need to be replaced. So I'm going to just find all the ones on the board that are 100 microfarad and replace them and then move on to another value. And that's how I plan to attack this board. Um, one thing that you should keep in mind though, when you're working on the Turbo Duo or the PC Engine Duo is that Many of these traces will be in very bad shape. Some of them might even be completely severed. This is especially true for the Turbo Duo. So in this case, I may or may not use the normal method which I, I use, which is to use the pair of pliers to twist off the legs. Uh, that might be too aggressive here. So I'm gonna take it very much on a case by case basis. And if it turns out I have some that are in bad shape, I might switch to using a heat gun uh, to, to remove those. But uh, basically I'll show you really quick how I'm gonna start this whole process. All right, so I'm going to start by demonstrating on this capacitor over here. And so I'm going to use the leg breaking method that I'm pretty uh, comfortable with and that I prefer to use whenever I can. So I'm choosing this one because the pads are shiny and there's no evidence of corrosion on the side. Um, so what you want is a pair of pliers similar to this with like teeth so it can easily grab onto the can of the capacitor. And you just want to do rotations. You don't want to go up and down. You just want to go side to side. Uh, you can go in one direction or you can go in both directions clockwise and counterclockwise, um, but really you just want to keep going like this and eventually you'll feel them snap. Like I think I've already got one snapped. Yeah, I do. Okay, and that's it. And so you can see on the bottom, 
and that the legs are broken off, you can actually see that they're still attached and the base of the capacitor is still there. So once that's all set, I'm going to clip off these extra parts of the legs. Okay, and so now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and just add a lot of solder to those legs just so we can get them off and clean up any possible corrosion that might be in this area. We don't want to leave that behind because if we do, we'll damage traces. It'll eventually corrode through things. And now we're going to go ahead and clean it and you can either use a solder braid or I'm going to use my desoldering gun because it's quick and easy. Okay. And then finally, I'm just going to go ahead and get some alcohol and clean these pads up for good. All right, so with the alcohol, you want to clean up not just the pad, but the surrounding area as well, just in case there was any leaking that took place. So the alcohol will neutralize any electrolyte that's in the area. All right, so now we're ready to add a new capacitor. And so the way to do this with surface mount is to start by just adding solder, fresh solder to one of the pads. And you can see on the board that NEC very helpfully indicates what side is positive. There's a plus sign there. This is something you just got to keep an eye on so that you don't put them on backwards. And the positive side is indicated with with nothing actually. The, uh, the negative side is indicated with a black stripe with these surface mount caps. So now you can either hold these with the pliers or with your hand, melt the solder, and then just slide them in. And there we go. You may want to touch up the opposite side. And that's it, all set. So let's go ahead and replace all of these surface mount caps.
Okay, so I'm getting to the end of this long <laughs> recapping marathon, but I wanted to call your attention to two places on the board that are really important to take your time with and be very careful with. One is this section right here next to the activity light. There are three capacitors here, and these tend to take a lot of damage, and I've seen many... Um, turbo duos or PC engine duos where these caps are already broken off and rattling around inside the case and the traces are destroyed. Thankfully, it's not too hard to patch these. I mean, these guys are fine. As you can see, I cleaned it up. There's no damage. All the pads are good. But um, if it turns out that yours are broken, you can just have a look at this video here and maybe pause it if you need to. And um, you can use this information here to, to patch up any possible damage that you see in this area. So there's another region which is also very critical and very challenging, and that's this whole section right here. It's this whole section right here. This is all for, for, the, for the power management of the entire console, and all of these um, surface mount capacitors leak a lot. So there's often a lot of damage here, and there can be broken traces, um, particularly with these 10 microfarad capacitors. In my case, they were in great shape. I didn't have any broken pads or damaged traces of any kind. But in this area, it always helps if you take your sweet time, clean up the area thoroughly, and then check all the vias and just make sure everything is looking good. Um, I didn't do this, but in retrospect, I really should have removed all of these through hole capacitors first because it makes it a lot easier to put these little surface mount guys in once all this stuff is done. And then finally, I just wanted to kind of call your attention to the bottom of the board as well. And so hopefully this is showing up on camera, but you can see that there's a lot of junk under the, um, where the, where the power management is as well. So, so what ends up happening is that the electrolyte comes in through the vias and it comes down here and it makes a huge mess. And, and so, um, you can have, uh, loss of sound in this region as well. Um, so there's, in particular, this chip right here can go bad because of the electrolyte, and then there's components on the opposite side that can also go bad, or some of the traces on the opposite side that can go bad. So if your system works after the recap, but there's no sound, you should definitely pay attention to this area right here. All right, so I'm going to get the last capacitors replaced, and then um, we're going to give this thing a preliminary test and see how it works. All right, so after lots and lots of work, this system is now fully recapped. And so I've put it back into the case, and I just wanted to go over some final points. Um, I did replace all of the through-hole capacitors as well, and uh, the only thing I wanted to add about that is that they are kind of uh, tricky to take out. You want to use a lot of heat to remove them, just because the ground plane on this is pretty thick. But otherwise, it's pretty straightforward. That's only the only thing to consider. Just use a lot of heat when you're when you're trying to remove these, just because they can be kind of tricky. Um, so aside from that, I didn't run into any issues. I didn't pull any pads. I didn't have any um, that were seriously damaged, but there definitely was a lot of corrosion. I'm sure you could see in the montage that I was cleaning up the board constantly. And I went through easily like 20 Q-tips that were completely covered in gunk. So be prepared for that. Um, when you're reassembling the console, you want to make sure that this whole region over here is really clear of any obstructions because the, um, the, the CD open close switch is right over here and if anything gets in the way of that it will think that the door is open all the time and you can't play games so just make sure everything is like really tucked in really out of the way just like how you're seeing here on on my system and as long as this area is clear and that these caps are really pushed down in you should be fine all right so let me go ahead and show you um how we're going to test this thing All right, so the first thing that I need to do is um, I want to remove this little magnet over here because this magnet is what uh, holds the CD in place so that everything is read properly. And this will allow me to look at the board at the exact same time that I'm actually playing back CDs. So if you guys can see over here, there's like a tiny little notch, a little plastic black notch over here. This is the locking mechanism. So if you pinch on that and then rotate counterclockwise just a little bit, it comes right off. And then to reattach it, you do the exact same thing. You just line it up so that the notch is right over here, facing the back of the case, and then you twist clockwise until you hear a little snap, and now the magnet is locked in. So that's how you remove the magnet. All right, so now that I have the magnet, let's go ahead and plug this thing in and see if we have CD games running. 
Okay, so I've got everything plugged in. So um, the first thing I'm going to do is just test functionality of the Hue card slot. So for that, I've got my Turbo EverDrive. And what's nice about this is you can easily switch it to Japanese or American regions. So it's switched to Japanese. And now let's see what happens. Okay, great. So looks like everything is working here. Just testing out with Bonk's Adventure, and uh, yeah, everything looks good. I mean, I'm not surprised about this because this whole section of the system was already working even with the old caps. So yeah, this looks good to me. Okay, now it's time for the real test. <clears throat> so we're going to be testing the CD portion of the console now. So to do that, you take the, uh, the little magnetic ring that we removed, and you make sure it's placed with the plastic side facing down, and you'll hear it snap into place like that. And then you want to have one hand holding down the, um, the switch so that the console thinks that the door is closed. So now let's go ahead, let's push the run button and see if it reads Rondo of Blood. Oh yeah, that's awesome. Okay, looking good. It's slow, but it's a single speed CD drive, so that's not surprising. Oh man, oh thank god, it's working. <laughs> All right, this is great. Um, you know, if if it turned out that this wasn't working, then I would go into a discussion of how to adjust the potentiometers to calibrate the laser. But honestly, that could be a video all into itself because that's pretty complicated stuff. Um, I will still test this further, so I'm going to take a CD with a lot of audio tracks that go all the way out to the far edge, and I'll see if it plays those correctly. If it does, then I'll consider this a success, and if not, then I'll come back and I'll adjust the pots, and I'll show you guys how I do that. But otherwise, I think that's it for this video. We've got this Turbo, or this PC Engine Duo fixed. Um, as I hope you guys can see, this is a really tough repair. They can go wrong at a lot of different stages, so definitely take your time if you're planning to do one of these. So, yeah, if you guys like this kind of content, it would be great if you could either like the video or consider subscribing to the channel. I have videos like this out every Friday. And then, of course, if you've got a console that needs to be repaired or modified, you can always reach me directly at oneuprestorations.com. So thanks again, guys, for watching, and I will see you next time.